Python comes with a lot of inbuilt modules and methods, and a lot of these are very convenient. The only problem is that we don't have time to learn all of them. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you another very convenient method that comes with one of the inbuilt modules called func tools. So from func tools, we're going to import a method called reduce. So what is the goal of reduce? Well, reduce aims to turn a list or an iterable into a single element, into one single result. So if you have a lot of text or a lot of integers in a list providing some sort of functionality, you can water that down to a single element. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples on how this works. And to get started, we'll create a list of numbers. So that's going to be a list of type integer. That's going to equal one, two, three, four, five. And this will be the most basic example. And we will also create a result of type float. And that's going to equal reduce. And inside here, it takes three arguments. One is the function, one is the sequence, and one is the initial value. And the initial value is optional, but for the first two, we do need to provide that if we want this to work. So you can either pass in a function or you can create a lambda. So here I'm going to create a lambda that takes A and B because you need to take in two inputs for this to actually work. And what we're going to do is add A to B. And then we're going to pass in our numbers. Right now, if we print the result, you'll notice that we're going to get the sum or the cumulative sum of these numbers. And using plus doesn't really change anything from using sum. So maybe it would be better if we used the asterisk to multiply the numbers. So now we have 120. So what's going on here? What did we just do here? Well, we're performing an operation on our list, but we're doing it gradually, which means first we start with the first two numbers. So we got one times two, and that returns two, and then it stores it in A, in other words. So the next time we do that operation, it's going to be two times three. So now we have six and that gets stored in A once again. Then with six, we have six times four, which is 24. And then we get 24 times five. So as you can see, we're gradually going through each one of the elements while accumulating the left side so that we can continue making those calculations. If we go back to plus, I can show you a rough sketch of what that actually looks like. So take a look at this comment because this is exactly what's going on inside here with these numbers. We start with one plus two, then we add three, then we add four, and then we add five, each time adding it to the previous result. So that was a super watered down example, and I'm going to show you another watered down example just so you can get a good idea on how it works. So for the next example, we're going to create a list of strings, and I'm just going to call it strings due to lack of creativity and that's going to equal this list here. And I'm going to copy and paste in my previous list. So as you can see, we have A1, B2, C3, D4, and E5. But now I'm going to show you how we can also add an initializer to reduce. So we're going to create the result as always, which will be of type string, and we're going to pass in reduce, and the function we're going to use is another lambda, which of course takes A and B, and then we're going to have a formatted string so here we'll pass in a dash b. And of course, we need to pass in the list. Right now, if we print this result, we're going to get each one of these separated by a dash. And I already know that print can do that for free by providing a separator, but this is just to demonstrate how it works. So again, we start with a and b, so a1 and b2. And the second we do the first loop, it moves on to adding c3. So a becomes a1 and B2 with the dash, and B becomes C3. So we keep on performing this operation over and over. So we understand that part, but what is the initializer? What does it do? Well, let's just add something here that says init. And you can place any initial value you want in there. So if we run the program now, you'll notice that we will have a new value in the console called init. And that's just the default value. That's the start value each time we use this. And that's also going to be used if there's nothing in the list. For whatever reason, if you pass in an empty list, it's going to use this as a placeholder. Otherwise, it's just going to use it as the first element. It's always going to be there, and that's why it's considered the initializer. It's also worth mentioning that if we have no initializer and we only have one element, it's just going to return the first element because there's nothing to be done there. It's already reduced to one element, but if we put everything back, we will get the exact same output as from earlier. 
So personally, I really enjoy this method. I think it's really cool. But do let me know what you think about all this in the comment section down below. I would love to hear about it. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.